greetings to you my dear family welcome to our wednesday night service welcome to our bible study this is called the heart to heart conversation this is where we receive from the heart of god to our hearts and whenever our heart is receiving from god there is going to be an overflow in our life there is going to be a change in our attitude there is going to be a change in our confession and as a result of that everything in our life will see a transformation that is why the bible encourages us to guard our heart because out of our heart flows the wellspring of life and there's no better way to protect that heart than to study god's word and that's why we are gathered here on a wednesday night i thank god for the diligent way in which our prophets have been teaching us in this season i'm sure that all of you who were able to catch up on the word that our prophet brought this last weekend you've been thoroughly energized in your spirit by it the lord spoke to our flesh he spoke to our soul and he spoke to our spirit hearing the voice of god is foundational for every child of god like our prophet taught us last weekend we cannot completely depend on an external source for each and every direction that we need all through our life we have to learn how to incline our ears and hear the heart of god the lord wants to speak to each and every one of us and in fact he is speaking the question is whether we are listening the question is whether we will incline our ears and receive what he is speaking he is not going to increase the volume of his speaking he is not going to do anything more we are the ones who need to realign ourselves so we can hear and understand everything that the lord is releasing over our lives if you're online and if you're able to comment let us know what other points from the last sunday sermon blessed you when we revise and when we express and when we share what we have learned that learning now begins to have a strong hold in our mind in our heart it begins to now become the basis the principle the foundation on which you are now going to build your life your perspectives your decisions your choices so take time every week to share what the lord is speaking to you to write down what the lord is speaking to you to communicate it to other people so that they can also be blessed in the same way that you were blessed let me remind you to continue to pray and believe god for our own properties in the city of ottawa this is something that our man of god declared we are going to have in no time so it's necessary that we pray for it we believe god for it and we partner with this ministry for the same and we thank god for each and every one of you who've been diligently breaking your alabaster jar so that you can be part of this glorious building that the lord wants to give us please remember that the line is still open you can go on revivenations.org/give and there is a specific option over there to give towards the church in ottawa may the lord honor your giving may the lord bless you in proportion to your heart in proportion to your desire in proportion to your action may the lord build your home may the lord bless your home may the lord establish your home i am excited for everything that the lord has in store for us and i pray that you would also be and you would constantly pray and you would constantly believe for this and you would constantly work towards it thank you for joining us tonight we are going to continue the bible study from the book of ephesians i've been enjoying reading out these scriptures for you and just meditating on them each week and i believe that the lord is going to transform our identity we will know who we are we will know who god wants us to be we will understand 
all the hidden wisdom and grace that he has deposited inside of us as we complete this study. We are in chapter 3 today and we'll read from verse 18 all the way to verse 21. Apostle Paul says, And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ. Though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to Him in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Somebody type an amen. Somebody scream an amen. Somebody just agree with me and say an amen to this word that is going to bless us tonight. Amen. Amen. The scripture in verse 18, Apostle Paul, he begins by praying for us and blessing us and declaring, may you have the power to understand. May you have the power to comprehend. There is a problem with many of us in the church. It is that we hear but do not understand. We hear the voice of God but we are not able to discern the learnings behind that voice. We hear sermons but we do not understand. And that's where Apostle Paul says you need the power to understand. The power, the ability to understand. The ESV Bible says may you have the strength to comprehend which means there is a lack of capacity that we have because of which we can miss an understanding that the Lord wants to give us. This strength, it doesn't come from physical sources. It is dependent purely on your revelation of certain things, certain perspectives. If you heard the word on the Shaiju Matthew app, which is titled, Access Unlocked, you would have had a fresh revelation on the access that we have into the presence of God. And that revelation, it now begins to become the strength and the ability that I have now to understand. It gives me the power to comprehend. Now, because of that understanding, I will draw near to God even when I don't feel like it. I will confess the right things even when I don't see any manifestation of it immediately. Because of that understanding, I will grow in my relationship with God. So many of us, we perish because we do not have the right understanding. I pray and I believe that today we will go back with a power to understand, a power to comprehend, an ability to understand and discern and have the revelation of what the Lord wants to do, what the Lord wants to speak. Parallelly, if there is any doubts or there is any disbelief or there is any fear that is now working as a stumbling block to you understanding, to your revelation, to your comprehension of the work of God, you need to surrender it before the Lord. We need to cry out to God like the father of the demon-possessed boy cried out to Jesus saying, I believe. Please help my unbelief. Please help my fears. Please help me overcome these questions or concerns that I have in my mind. Help me, God. God is not going to reject an honest conversation. He's not scared of a doubt or a fear that you have in your head. But the problem is when we do not surrender that to God, we keep it in ourselves and we let it become bigger and bigger until the point where it begins to blind us, stop us from having a revelation of God. It becomes a covering over our eyes in Apostle Paul's language, that covering that stops us from seeing the glory of God. 
but whenever we believe whenever we trust in what god has already said that covering it is removed that veil is removed and we are able to encounter greater revelations we are able to see the glory of god and today i pray that all of us we will have the power to understand apostle paul goes on to say in the same scripture and may you have the power to understand as all god's people should in the other translations it says together with all the lord's holy people or with all the other saints may your ability to understand may your ability to comprehend what god is speaking what god is revealing let it be along with other saints now there is a kind of a revelation that you will get in your solitary moments when you're alone with god when you're away from people and then there is a revelation that god wants to give you when you're surrounded by god's people and that is why we keep coming back to church in spite of having a personal relationship with god in spite of the lord talking to us even at home in spite of us having all the online resources where we can tune in and receive a word from we still come back to church week after week and even during midweek services like this so that we can be in a community of people that are hearing the voice of god and along with all of them we are able to receive a greater ability a greater strength to comprehend the voice of god that is why it is necessary for us to discern who are the people that i need to fellowship with who are the people that i need to have a relationship with because some of these guys can help the process of us being able to grow in our relationship with god and some of them can slow down that process can become a hindrance in that process can be the voice of the enemy that will sow seeds of fear or doubt in that process of receiving revelation and power to understand from god so yes we need to discern and we need to know who are the right people where is my fellowship where should i be rooted but just because there has been some bad experiences we do not disconnect from fellowship completely because fellowship is a godly principle it is established in the new testament church the first century church would gather every day for fellowship and for the teaching of the apostles and for prayer and that's why there is an instruction in the bible that says do not forsake the assembling the gathering together of the saints because when you gather together there is a power that is released that is going to help you to understand that will help you to comprehend see what apostle paul is going to give us next it is really big and he says it is necessary that you be with godly people when you are about to receive this because you will only be able to practice this in your church you cannot practice this alone at home because in the next few lines he is going to talk to us about love how can we be alone at home and be tested in our ability to grow or show love if we are all by ourselves we cannot love people we cannot show love to others sometime back our father opened up john chapter 15 for us the abiding the process of remaining in him and one of the scriptures from john chapter 15 it says i have loved you in the same way that the father has loved me now i want you to love others in the same way that i have loved you i want you to love each other that is the lord's expectation from us that the same intensity of love that jesus has shown towards us we will show it to each other how will that be possible if we are locked up in a room all by ourselves how is it possible if we are not willing to be part of a community how is it possible if we are not willing to pursue 
understanding and receive the power to understand along with all the lord's holy people along with the saints let me complete reading that scripture for you he says and may you have the power to understand as all of god's people should how wide how long how high and how deep his love is this is a verse that we all are aware of very closely we've sung this in sunday school songs we have memorized this it keeps occurring again and again in our conversations and we believe in the greatness of god's love we believe in the power that is love has last week we were able to have a little glimpse of what god wants to do in our life the bible says that when he comes to dwell in our hearts it is going to cause us to be rooted in love it is going to cause us to be grounded in love and here the lord says that he wants us to not just be rooted in love but he wants us to understand love this love that god has for us this love that god wants to show to others now through us it has multiple dimensions it says there is a width of this love there is a height of this love there is a length of this love and there is a depth to this love all the four dimensions it's necessary for us to understand what these four dimensions are the width of god's love it speaks of god's arms that are wide open and he rejects no one he doesn't ignore anybody no one is outside the frame of god's love which means even the ones that are judged by god even the ones that are punished by god they are still done so in love he loves the righteous and the unrighteous alike he loves the jews and the gentiles alike he loves the old and the young alike he loves people of every race every color that is god's love for us there is a width to this love the second dimension is the length of this love which i would characterize as time that this love it endures this love it is not going to give up on me very soon this love is not just for one season of my life this is long it is going to last all the way into eternity apostle paul he explains he's saying there are only three things that will last forever that is faith hope and love and the greatest of these three is love and so this love which is long it is going to last all the way into eternity is something that is going to work for me all through my life there is not going to be a single season of my life where i am outside the covering of god's love where the length of god's love doesn't work for me doesn't prevail over my life then it goes on to explain that there is a height to this love there is an elevated view of this love available for everybody to see and i believe it is speaking about the cross of jesus that is the height that is the ultimate public expression of god's love for humanity and it says we would understand that height and the last dimension is the dimension of depth this is a dimension that you will get to enjoy and experience if you will walk very intimately with god where the deep of god will now cry out to the deep of you the depths of god to your depths where he is going to take you deeper and deeper into his love and you continue to grow in a revelation of how much god loves us this is very personal this is very intimate this is very unique this is going to be different for all of us how i grow deeper in my revelation of god's love may not be the same way that someone else does may not be the same response someone else has but apostle paul says this is my prayer for you that you will have the power to understand as all of god's people 
along with you should they should understand how wide they should understand how long they should understand how high and they should understand how deep the love of god is the love of christ is we can pursue this understanding in our lives today we can pursue this understanding in our homes today we can pursue this understanding in our churches today what a beautiful and glorious and heaven like culture we can produce in our respective environments the next verse goes on to say in verse 19 may you experience this love of christ although it is too great for you to understand it fully may you be able to experience the love of christ in other words it's one thing for you to have the ability and the power to comprehend the width of god's love to understand the length of god's love to understand the height of god's love and to continue to grow in the depth of god's love but it's a completely different thing for you to experience the love of christ for you to experience how much he loves you for you to know it tangibly the other translations would explain it like this that you would know the love of christ that surpasses knowledge this is not just a revelation this is not just understanding this has to surpass understanding and knowledge and revelation where this becomes your experience where you know it you taste it you become a witness of it that is the kind of love that surpasses knowledge that surpasses just understanding that surpasses just head knowledge now it is entering into the practical physical dimensions of your life we know the story of cory ten boom where she was uh, really assaulted and mistreated in nazi germany and uh, at a later point after the war was over after she was free she was preaching at this particular conference and there was this person that she witnessed in the audience who came to meet her afterwards and this was the same guy who had tortured Cory and her sister Betsy back in the concentration camp and it was natural for her to feel upset and hurt and all those memories to come back hurting her and she wanted to be hurtful to this guy she didn't want to forgive this guy she didn't want to even shake her hands with this person because she remembered every tiny little detail of the torture she underwent under this guy and all of a sudden she says even though i did not want to do it i could just feel an infilling of the love of god this infilling that caused me to lift up my hands and to shake his hand and to hug him and to love him and to forgive him and at that moment she says i knew for a fact that this was not me this was the agape love of god that was now flowing like a river through my life it is possible my dear friend that we can experience the love of god this is a love that cannot be justified this is a love that cannot be understood it cannot be practically explained away nor can it fit within the boundaries of logic or rationale it is something that we have to enjoy experience and yield to the bible says that we will know the love of christ that we will know we will experience it intimately similar to how adam knew eve where there was intimacy in the same way we would know the love of christ that we would be intimate with his love that is what jesus meant when he asked us to remain in his love as he remains in his father's love how will our lives change if we are intentional to practice this on a daily basis every morning before we leave from home we remember that we are to remain in his love 
that we are to experience the love of Christ that we are to engage with the love of God that we are to experience this flow of God's love through us which surpasses all understanding that surpasses all knowledge and it surpasses all information this is now becoming practical and pragmatic now you may ask how do i know that i am experiencing the love of christ how do i know that i am manifesting that love in my daily life it says in the next line of the same scripture then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from god this will be the fruit this will be the result of you experiencing the love of christ that there will be completeness that there will be a infillingness there will be a fullness of god fullness of life that you will experience a person that is walking in the experience of life is a demonstration of a person who is walking in the fullness of god we may look at the external signs and the wonders and the miracles and the breakthroughs and we may think that is the fullness of god no that is the sign that god is using such a person that is the sign that god is in him but the fullness of god is the demonstration of love is the demonstration of grace is the demonstration of mercy a mercy that comes from the father a mercy that comes through jesus a mercy that comes because of a intimate relationship with the holy spirit and that is the sign of a man or a woman who is full of god when we step out of our homes when we step out of our churches and the world around us now begins to see us witness us study us observe us they are not going to see god but they are going to see the evidence of this love they're going to see evidence of this grace and that will be a sign for them that you are a child of love that you are a child of god that you are a product of god since according to the word when you experience the love of christ which is too great to be understood fully when you know this love when you're intimate with this love it will cause you to be filled with all the fullness of god what a glory it is for us to experience the fullness of god the bible says in colossians chapter 1 and 2 that the fullness of the godhead it dwelt in christ that everything every iota every atom or everything that made god who he is the father the son and the holy spirit the fullness of god it dwelt in christ and now here it says when you experience the love of christ when you experience this love that supersedes knowledge and information then you will be filled with all the fullness of god which means the father the son and the holy spirit and all of creation that is inside of him all of the dominion that is inside of him it comes home with you because now you have the fullness of god in you now this is a maturity a growth that we are all working towards the more we understand the width and the length and the height and the depth of god's love the more we will experience that love and the more we experience that love the more we will walk in the fullness of this god who gives us this love that is our aim that is our goal our goal is not just to go to church and look nice and be nice no our goal is to love the way that god loves us our goal is to be everything that god created us to be god made us in his likeness in his image and god he is love god he is ferocious in his pursuit ferocious in his 
demonstration, ferocious in his giving, ferocious in his expression of his love. And that is who we want to be. That is what we are pursuing after. Because when we reach there, the Bible says, we will be filled with all the fullness of God. Moving on to the next verse, 20. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is the doxology or the blessing or the benediction with which Apostle Paul, he is closing the initial theological part of the book of Ephesians. Starting from chapter 4, he is now going to give us practical implications, practical instructions, practical help as to how we ought to live here on the earth. But the first three chapters, we see such an in-depth understanding on who God is and who the church is and how he has deposited something deep into the heart of the church. In verse 20, we will see this demonstration of God's ability. What we will do is to break down this verse in multiple parts and we will study each word, each phrase. The first thing that we ought to understand is the ability of God. The Bible says to him who is able to do, he is able to perform, he is able to rescue, he is able, the one who is able. So there is an introduction about this God who is powerful, who is omnipotent. This God, when we understand his ability, we understand our own ability. The reason that we are important in life is because we don't understand God's potency. We don't understand what God is able to do. It's only to the measure that we understand God's ability that we will also demonstrate that same ability here on the earth. When Jesus walked on the earth, the one reason why he healed the sick, why he raised the dead, why he would cleanse lepers, why he would cast out demons, why he would teach in such authority is to demonstrate to us what he is capable of so that we can now imitate him, so that we can now follow him. Everything that Jesus himself did, he commanded his disciples to do so. He told them, now go into these villages, now go and heal the sick, now go and cast out demons, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. And later he told them, you go into all the world and preach the gospel. Baptize those who believe and make disciples of them and teach them to obey every commandment that I have given you. So there is a transfer of ability. Everything that Jesus was able to do, he is passing it on to his disciples. He's passing it on to his followers and he expects them to do the same things and even more. Jesus told them, because you believe in me, you are not just going to do what I have done. In fact, you are going to do more. You are going to do beyond what I have done. So the ability of God is not something we look up to and we admire and adore from a distance. It is something that we ought to imitate. It is something that God fill us with faith it is something that has to increase our expectation and our hunger and our belief for what we are able to do in life. And it is because we are created to have dominion. We are created to be creators here on the earth. We are created to represent God here on earth. Created to be like Him. Created to be representatives of Him created to be image bearers or image carriers of God here on the earth. My God is able, so am I. My God is capable, so am I. My God, He can help, so can I. Everything that God can do, so can I do it. 
yes i am not god but i am the carrier of god i am the image bearer of god i am the one in whom the fullness of god now lives so i am able to do just as god is able to do i'll explain this further in the next line it will make sense it says now all glory to god who is able through his mighty power the might of his power is something that we have to meditate on we have to investigate we need to ask questions around it because even though he is able he would use an external source to demonstrate his power even though he is all powerful even though he can rescue the people of israel from egypt without somebody demonstrating that power for him yet he chose a moses who will go into egypt who will go into the home of pharaoh with a rod to demonstrate that power so when the egyptians saw they saw power coming out of a rod they saw power coming out of a man called moses even though god did not need to depend on moses god chose to use a man to demonstrate that power so it says this god who is able but he will do it through his mighty power so you and i we need to become vessels of that power because that same line goes on to say that this mighty power that is at work within us we are always looking up to god hoping that he will be the answer he will be the solution he will be the one who will help us but god's perspective is different god says yes i am omnipotent and i am able to do all things but what i will do is to use my power in you there is this power that is at work within you and i am going to work my ability through that power so this power it is limited to your willingness to host it to your willingness to understand it to your willingness to acknowledge it if you don't believe that there is power within you you are going to remain impotent for the rest of your life you're going to be dependent on someone else to pray for you someone else to just encourage you someone else to change your diapers someone else to constantly tell you it's okay it's okay rise up rise up no today you need to see within yourself and believe what god's word says it says that according to his power that is at work within us according to the power that is functioning within us according to the power that is constantly demonstrated inside of us that is where god is working today don't have to look to an external source all the time see the external sources are so that you can be inspired to look within when you look at your man of god you learn keys and principles so that you can look within to the gift that has already been deposited into you when he laid his hands upon you now it is your job to fan into flames that little spark that you have in your spirit now it is your job to believe in the treasure that has been deposited inside of you now it is your job to meditate on the ability of god and then pursue that same ability through his mighty power that is at work within us when we pursue this as a daily discipline in every area of our lives when we say i am able i am capable because of god's power his mighty power that is at work within me i am able i am not a victim of my environment i am not a victim of what people say about me i am not a victim of my job i am not a victim of what is being done to me i am not a victim of my childhood there is a mighty power that is at work within me it is greater than all the trauma that i have faced it is greater than all the pain that i have gone through 
it is greater than all the lack that i have faced in my life and i am going to believe in this power more than i have believed in this lack more than i have trusted in any of the other sources in my life all glory be to god who is able through his mighty power that is at work within us the next line is very familiar to us it says he will accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think now this is a phrase that we often pray when we talk to god we say you are able to do more than we might ask or think without remembering the context or the premise of it is he able to do more than we might ask or think absolutely but the one thing that can limit that work of god is how much he gets to work within us how much he gets access into the innermost parts of our life because it says all glory to god who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish it is that same mighty power that is working inside of us that is now accomplishing this infinitely more than we might ask or think immeasurably abundantly more than what we might ask or think so in the days ahead for those of you who are willing to look within to fan into flames the grace that god has put on the inside of you you are going to experience what apostle paul explained in the scripture you will taste and see the exceedingly the abundantly more than what you could ask or dream or think or conceive in your mind in another scripture apostle paul says no eye has ever seen no ear has heard no mind has conceived what the lord has prepared for those who love him now i had this genuine doubt when i was studying this how can i look within myself for certain things for some things that i don't have the capacity to ask or even think or even conceive or even imagine how can i produce a result that i have not been able to envision myself how can i bring forth an organization or a ministry or a business that i don't have the capacity to even ask god for that i don't even have the capacity to dream about that's why we should pause here and reread what god is trying to tell us he's saying that i am going to exceed your expectations i am going to do abundantly more than what you had planned for yourself it is not for the lazy minded people it is not for the ones that don't have a dream that don't have a vision that don't have a goal in life this is for those that are pursuing god that are desiring for dominion and when we take those steps diligently to pursue that dominion in finances the dominion in relationships the dominion through our ministry the dominion in our uh, marriages in our homes in our parenting when we actively pursue that dominion the bible says that now god he is able to now exceed your wildest expectations but how is he going to do that he is going to use the power that is at work within you already he is going to allow his ability to be transferred into your ability and through that he is going to cause you to exceed your own greatest expectations i pray that someone will receive this as a word of encouragement and a word of blessing today that this week i am going to exceed my own expectations this week i'm going to pray more than how much i wanted to pray this week i'm going to give and sow more than how much i had planned to give or to sow this week i'm going to do more ministry than how much i thought i was capable of doing this week i'm going to invest into the right businesses and i'm going to do business 
even more than what i had expected to do because my god is able because he is at work within me because his mighty power is constantly putting things into place he is stirring up things inside me now he is able to accomplish infinitely more immeasurably more exceedingly more abundantly more than all that i can ask or think or imagine or expect from god this is how the fullness of god inside of you will begin to manifest it will manifest through dominion it will manifest through the way that you are able to look within yourself and bring forth everything that god has deposited inside of you the way that you are able to look into your environment into your children into your spouse and bring forth everything that is in the heart and the mind of god the way that you are able to look into the limited resources that you have and you are able to bring forth an entire organization entire businesses entire firms that are now going to employ hundreds and thousands of people how you are able to look at nothing and create everything out of that nothing that is exactly what god did in the beginning there was nothing nothing from which god created the heaven and the earth god did not need a raw material an initial investment he did not need a down payment so that he can make a house no he brought everything that we see out of things that we cannot see so today you don't have to wait and just pray and ask for certain changes and certain breakthroughs and certain blessings you need to exercise the authority that you already have you need to function in the ability of god you need to now function in a level that is exceedingly abundantly above all that you have even asked god for that you even dreamt of that you've even thought of that you've even imagined of if we will only remember that there is great power within us that there is great fullness of god within us this fullness of god it comes as a result of love it comes because we insistently persistently consistently work and walk and labor in love and when that fullness comes we don't just stay there we don't just get satisfied with the little with the normal things of life now when that fullness comes that will demand a dominion in our lifestyle the fullness of god cannot be hosted without a pursuit of dominion the fullness of god cannot be achieved without a demonstration of dominion the fullness of god will eventually cause you to become like god will cause you to function like god will cause you to have authority and rulership and lordship like the lord himself now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think however it is according to the power that is at work within us according to the power to the same framework that i have given to that power to the same limitations boundaries that i have put around that power the work of the lord will be limited to that boundaries the last verse for today is verse 21 ephesians chapter 3 verse 21 it's a doxology like i told you it continues from the previous verse and it says glory to him in the church and in christ jesus through all generations forever and ever amen so there are three dimensions to this glory of god the first dimension that this glory will manifest in is in you remember verse 20 now all glory to god who is able 
through his mighty power at work within us. So the first level of glory, it will manifest through the work of God within you. There is a faith you need to have about what God is doing inside of you. And that is going to bring great glory to God. That is going to bring great worship, great praise to God. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 16, Let your light shine out for all to see, so that the people of the world, they can see your works and they can glorify your Father in heaven. They will worship God when they see your works. That was true for Joseph in Pharaoh's palace. It was true for Daniel in Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. It was true for Daniel under all the kings that he served in. Everybody, they worshipped God. They praised the God of heavens because of the light that came out of Daniel's life. So there is a glory that God will receive because you walk in power, because you look within yourself for evidence of the work of God and then you demonstrate that work. You let that work come forth and there is a glory that God will receive because of you, because of your individuality, because of your personal faith, because of your journey with God. Please don't underestimate that. Please don't ignore that. As much as we are supposed to fellowship with the church and as much as we are supposed to bring God glory even in the church, this is also first demonstrated on a personal level. We can't just say we are all part of the church and everything the church is doing, I'm doing. No, we have to achieve a personal dominion as well. As much as we will have dominion along with the whole church. So the first dimension of this glory is the work that you and I do and God gets glory out of that. The second dimension of this glory, it says in verse 21, glory to him in the church. In other words, when we come together and when we pray together, when we believe God together, when we exercise our faith together as a community, together as Revive Nations Global Church, the demonstration of that faith, the demonstration of that love, the way that we love each other, the way that we submit to our leaders, the way that we are fitted together as one body of Christ, the way that we become a dwelling place for God here on the earth, the way that we demonstrate the unity of our brothers and sisters, the way that we are able to love and lead our communities where God has placed us, all of that will bring glory to God. Because the second dimension of glory, it's got to do with how we function together as the church. As a church of Jesus Christ, we cannot be disconnected from Jesus. We cannot be disconnected from our foundation, which is of apostles and prophets. We cannot be disconnected from one another because we are living stones that are set next to each other with Christ Jesus himself in the middle. We have to be a church that is united and founded and rooted in the grace of God, in the voice of God, in the plan of God for our lives. And it says we are going to bring great glory to the Father because of everything that we do in the church. And the third level or the third dimension of this glory, it says glory to Him in Christ Jesus. The one thing that we can never underestimate or we can never look down on is the work that Jesus has already done. That is going to speak out, bring forth eternal glory to God throughout all ages. We studied that in chapter 2 and chapter 3. How the work of Jesus on the cross is crying out for generations, for ages in the past, present and in the future. Even in heaven, he is the lamb that was slain. Even in heaven, there is demonstration of what Jesus did for the glory of his Father. 
what he did to do the will of his father here on the earth. In other words, we cannot lose our sight of what Jesus has done, what he has accomplished. We cannot stop talking about the cross. We cannot stop talking about the finished work of Jesus in the death, the burial and the resurrection of Jesus. We cannot stop talking about his intercession on our behalf at the right hand of the Father. He is constantly bringing glory to God the Father because of the way that it demonstrated for us how to live as a son. So there is glory that God receives because of my personal faith and my personal overcoming because of my personal demonstration of God's work within us. There is a glory that God receives because of the church, because of how we live here on the earth. But the ultimate glory that God receives is because of Jesus. This glory is something that is going to last for generations to come. It says glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations for ever and ever and ever. Amen. Wow, what a book that we are in. This is a book that the more we study, that there is more to glean from it. There is more to learn from it. There is more to practice from the theological aspect of this book. We have not yet entered into the practical aspects. We are still in the doctrinal part of this book where Apostle Paul is setting the doctrines correct for us. And even in this place, there is so much we can learn and practice. How much more in the rest of this book? I pray that today the Lord has spoken to you. And if you're in agreement, let's pray together. Abba Father, we thank you. Thank you. We thank you for what Jesus did for us on the cross. We thank you because of the glory that he brought for you. We thank you for the work that he accomplished for you. We thank you for the work that he did because of his love for you, because of his pursuit of your will in his life, because of his desire to obey the Father even to the point of death. We thank you, Lord, for giving us a glimpse of that glory. And Father, we want to thank you today also because as a church, as your body here on the earth, we get to carry your glory. We get to bring you glory. We get to demonstrate what loving each other looks like. We get to become the house of God, the dwelling place of God here on the earth. We get to host your glory, your presence, your goodness here on the earth. We get to demonstrate your love to people that have not seen you. And we thank you for this privilege, God. And we also thank you that in our personal lives, we get to bring you glory. The way that we love each other, the way that we look within ourselves and we understand the, the width and the length and the height and the depth of God's love for us. When we experience the intimacy with that love, when we begin to walk in the fullness of life, in the fullness of God, when we begin to bring forth everything that you are working within us that is exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ask or think or imagine, we thank you for the faith that you have given several of us to walk in this level of dominion. Now, I pray, Father, that out of everything that we do, you will always get the glory. You will always get the honor all the worship, all the praise will belong to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we receive the blessing from this portion of Ephesians. And everybody said, Amen. Wow. I'm blessed personally. It's time for us to now seek the Lord together. Fan into flames the gift that He has already placed inside you. Stir yourself up. Let the river flow. Let the Lord that is already inside of you, begin to reveal to you the work that He's doing in you. So that as you yield to it, the exceedingly, abundantly, the fullness of God will begin to manifest through you. Thank you for tuning in today. 
we'll see you again on Sunday morning for the Sunday celebration service at 11 a.m. EST. May the shalom of God rest and abide upon you until then.